Okay, I'm reloaded. We got London on the Tell me, do you know the feel? Tell me, do you know the feel? You look up and you ain't got no feel. Oh, me in a Lambo? Nah. Hey, what's up, guys? It's Omi and Hellcat, and this is questions from Instagram. One, the next vlog is gonna be lit, and what will be the topic? I normally don't have a topic for uh, my vlogs. I just go as the day goes, and I always do something interesting. I, sometimes I feel as though that I don't record enough. I do more things that are interesting off camera than I do on camera, but it'll it'll start to open up a little bit. All right, this is from Chef Don. 215 was anyone in your corner pushing you towards success no um i don't recall a single person besides my wife at the time that was actually helping me or pushing me towards success everyone was pretty much doing their own thing you know this was uh, an idea that that just happened so my, my life just came as a total surprise to be honest this is for i've been a dub what is the one thing you want to tell the younger generation? Go to school. Make sure that you cherish every moment with your parents because life is very, very short. And make sure that you respect your credit and the money that you're making. Seriously, have a little bit of respect for money. All right, this is from Local Boy E Money. Is it hard to make the videos? Not in a sense. I mean, it's hard to keep sometimes doing the same takes so you can get different like views of what, what's going on. But, you know, digital and um, kid makes it actually a little easier. Well, kid makes it actually hard. I'm, so, I'm just joking. All right. This is from LVO All Black. What's the drink at the beginning of your videos? Get over here! That's actually um, body armor. It's probably one of my favorite drink right now. It's freaking incredible. And you know what? I'm, I'm, I'm big on speaking things into existence. So that's the reason why I do it. All right. This is from DJ Local. DJ 28 Local. This is, do you have a 4K camera? Actually, yes, we do. We have about four 4K cameras. We got a red, two Sonys, and a very expensive Canon. But yeah, so all the cameras are very, very high quality. You know what? Um, I put actually a lot of money behind this vlog. I'm already invested almost sixty thousand dollars in total into like getting cameras and equipment and everything. So I'm taking this very much serious. All right, next question is from Bamboo Leaf Gang. How did you sell your businesses or apps, and will you make more apps? No, um, I would never make another app after this. Um, I feel as though that once, you know, I, I say this all the time, that once something becomes a job, it doesn't become fun anymore. Then it's time to move to the next thing. You know, um, I always say that, you know, you take your passion, you don't do it for money. You take your passion, you take it serious, and then it, it eventually turns out to be your career. So, you know, there's some people who love photography, who just take pictures, that do it for free in the beginning, and then it becomes your career, and they live off it for the rest of their lives. So whatever interests you, some people like to wash cars, some people like to DJ, you know, do things for free in the beginning and, and you know, get a mentor or, or get somebody around you who's actually going to help you succeed in that field. And then boom, all of a sudden you have a, an amazing career. All right. Next one is from Brandon Goyas. Are you going to drop a video every day? I think every day is a little hard, but I, I can drop about four to five a week, you know, just because there's a lot of stuff that's going on. It's just. You know, my, sometimes my days are really long. So by the time you edit, it'll be a, another day after that. So about four to five. All right. Next, next one is from Travis underscore 21 underscore underscore. Esa canción la canta tú. Esta. Cabrona. And he said, uh, the song that I made, am I the one singing it? Yes, it's me featuring Derez Deshaun. Most of you guys know him from the song Hardaway. So, yeah. 
That's actually who's on my song. All right, next question is from Big Bry L. Big Bry L. How do you meet Miyabi? It's pretty crazy. Um, you know, we was going to Atlanta to actually do a song with with the Res the Showing. And the guy from Single Rose, what's his name? Isaac. 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 There you go. Mr. Handel actually introduced me to him. You know, he told me, hey, I got Chris Brown's uh, producer, you know, from the song What? You know, Miyabi actually got a couple platinum hits. And um, introduced me to him. And after that, dude, I freaking love the kid. So, yeah, that's how I met Miyabi. Amazing guy, by the way. Mm-hmm. What happened? <laughs> what are you talking about? All right. Next question is from. Oh, you got me on live? No, bro. <laughs> what you doing? <laughs> Nothing. Do you think? No. This is how you doing? From Kickfan underscore Dave. One Philly growing tuber to another. I love your shit. I hope we run into each other. Where you get your ideas for your ass from? I always said this story, you know, a lot of people just assume that I get my money from drugs or illegal activities, and honestly, that's not true at all. The last time I've ever sold drugs, I was still on probation while I was selling drugs, I'm being honest. Um, it was like 2014, and I wasn't no selling no freaking, I'm not no Pablo Escobar, I was selling to like one or two customers, you know, just to maintain. So um, we wound up getting robbed on July the 4th. You know, my brother and my friends left me alone. Got robbed for all the money we ever had. I got, I went back home and I, you know, I started to think. I'm like, you know, this, this ain't the life for me. This ain't the life I want to live. I'm, I'm not built to do the time anyway. I'm not built to do the crimes. You know, I've always been a kind of legit guy. So, you know, I decided to like stop selling drugs, you know. And I laid on my bed for about two to three weeks, stressing, asking God, why me? You know, why am I... Why do I have to go through these tough times like I've always been? It felt like, if my life always felt like it had purpose, but I had no purpose. You know, everything that I've been through and everything that I was going through was because I put myself in that position. I decided to play Xbox all day. I decided not to get up and get a job. I decided to wait on other people, and that's when you make the biggest mistake ever. So, you know, I laid on my bed for about two to three weeks. Boom, fire stick just came to my head. The worst fire stick. I rushed down the steps, got on the computer. I found somebody who was really huge in the field at the time. I just did one thing. I sent him a message, and he responded back a day later. He put me on a freaking a YouTube live show that I had no idea of the topics, but people just found me interesting and funny because I spoke my mind. And, you know, back in the days when you was, like, around Cody developers... Everyone was proper. I was the only one that was kind of ghetto. and So it caught people's attention quick. Some people liked it and some people hated it. There's no in-between with me. Either you love me or you hate me. There's no like, eh, you know? So that's what kind of personality I have. So that's exactly how everything came to fruition. Yeah. All right. This is from Travis. How did you get into construction? Now, like, my dad was, like, a big-time drug dealer, always was, and then, um, you know, my dad went to jail when I was about five years old, probably in 1990, and my dad didn't come back out of jail until 1996, so when he came back out of jail, you know, I worked on houses with my dad, I've always did sheetrock, cement work, whatever it took, you know, and I don't know, that, that kind of, like, stuck with me a little bit, I've always liked construction, you know, and I mean, I got fat as hell, but at that time, I was always in great shape, and you know, a lot of people always ask me, um, Omi, how come you always cut your own grass, um, when I got out of jail in 2004, you know, because I wound up getting shot in 2004, and um, I went to jail because of the weed they found in the house, so when I came out of jail, I wound up, um, you know, just becoming a landscaper, and I freaking enjoyed that job. I used to, listen, there's two jobs in my life that I enjoyed. It was landscaping. I loved it because I felt like I didn't have a boss. I was just with a partner all day cutting grass. And I loved when I was a pizza delivery driver. 
That's why like, I tip pizza delivery drivers heavy. It's because I was a pizza delivery guy and I lived off my tips. And this is around the recession where, you know, we had just went to war with Osama bin Laden. And in 2010, you know, gas was at $5 a gallon, the highest the nations have ever probably ever seen. And I was delivering pizza when, you know, when gas was $5 a gallon. And some people just wouldn't tip. So, you know, that's the reason why I tip so good to pizza delivery drivers. And shout out to um, the Couch Tomato and Manny Young. For, you know, believing in me at least and giving me a job when I needed it the most. So, yeah. Next question is from Ono Kid. And he's right there, by the way. How does it feel to work with Kid Kid? He doesn't work. He just, <laughs> he just talks on the phone all day. Nah, it's great, to be honest. All right. Next question is from... Underscore B.215. Besides the Hellcat, what's your favorite car? Um, that's hard. Probably the uh, the Lambo truck. I don't know because, you know, my dream... is that my dream car is a Corvette. You know, I used to play Gran Turismo. I hate PlayStation, by the way. So all you PlayStation fans, I'm sorry. I'm an Xbox fan. Always will be. I'm a Gears of War guy. But um, I don't know. Just the pure, the pure rawness of a Hellcat. It's just brolic. It's strong. You know, it's an everyday car. It's just, you know, I love a Hell, Hellcat. It just, it feels like nothing you ever drive. It doesn't feel like a Lamborghini. It doesn't feel like a Chevy. A Hellcat just feels like a Hellcat. There's no other cars you can compare it to. You can compare every other car in the world. You can compare my GTS to a Panamera. You can, you can uh, say, oh, the Ferrari is just like a Lamborghini, but you cannot compare a Hellcat to any other car in the market. So, um, besides the Hellcat, I will say the Corvette. Corvette's my favorite car. By the way, if I get 500,000 subscribers, subscribe right now, I'll be giving away a 2019 Corvette. And I swear to God, I will give it away. And this is not rigged. All right, and the next question is from Drew. You should show us the inside of all your cars, bro. Most people never see. I, you, know, you know what's crazy is that 80% of my cars are just average cars. I just have a lot of them. I have Jeeps. I have a 300. I have Charger. I have a two Challengers. that are Hellcats. Three pickup trucks. an F-350. Dodge Rams. It's just... I got a bunch of basic cars also. But, you know, I, I have a, a, Lam, a Lambo truck. I have a Lambo car. I have a Mercedes car. I had another one, but my friend Rich wrecked it. Thank you for that one. And I was never able to find that edition one ever again. You know, um, I'll show them though. Right, let's see. All right, next thing is I'm so digital, which he's sitting right there too. How do you balance work and having fun? Now, for a long time, I've never had fun. I always say this: I've never had fun. Everything was like was work, 15 hours a day on the computer, 16 hours a day on the computer. Now I feel like I do zero work and I just have fun. Or if I'm not having fun, I'm just brainstorming all day. And sometimes I, I think I overthink too much and I don't get nothing done. I procrastinate a lot. Like, let's say I wake up at 12 o'clock or 11 o'clock. I'll lay on my bed till 3 o'clock, just procrastinating on what my day is going to be. And let me tell you something. When you wake up in the morning, don't think about it. Just get up and just go. Because sitting around all day isn't doing anything. The minute you're up and doing it, then your day goes by smooth as hell. The minute you start sitting around and, oh, I don't want to go. I don't think I should go. Just get up and go. I think your day goes by a lot better. and it Actually, it'll work out for you. Trust me. The early bird gets the early worm. All right, this is from Fat Fresh. How do you progress over time? How did you learn it? And how you did it to, to get to where you are? Uh, let me tell you something. All you see and all I show and all I display now is the end result. Um, it took a long time to just get my priorities straight. I think it's, um, sometimes you have to balance having fun and being an adult. I played games my whole life, video games. You know, it's, it's something, it's a career that I always wanted to do. Sometimes you need to be realistic. Like, some people just quit their job to be like, I know I'm going to do this. And they'll quit their job and they're not realistic about the goals. 
So sometimes I think you have to be realistic, but at the same time, it took a long time to get to where I'm at. You know, it took, um, and nobody, and, and that's the sad part. You know, a lot of people in Philadelphia who dislike me never even looked my way. You know, they never even gave me a shot, an opportunity. They didn't acknowledge me anything. So, you know, when I get 90% of my money from online and then, you know, I start, then I create uh, a construction company, then I I start opening clubs and then I start buying properties, which that's another side of my life that I'm going to start showing you guys. People tend to get a little mad at me, but no one's ever helped me, you know? But but anyway, we're going to get past that. Um, It took a long time to get to where I'm at. I just think that I blew up out of nowhere. Um, I think a lot of the decisions that I made early on, they just happened to work. And right now, like I'm, I'm, I'm on such a positive note or, or positive level that it feels like everything that I do, it just works. Everything I touch is like turns into gold. It doesn't matter. It can be a pile of shit and there's going to be fucking glitter all over that pile of shit. Cause I'm serious. Like I don't, I don't know why or how, but that's what I say. You know, the energy that you put out is the same energy you're gonna receive back in. So just stay positive, and I think things will work out. Like before, you know, things used to happen to me. And I used to sit there, like, and I used to like look look up at the sky and just, you know, God, why? Like, fuck, why? Excuse my French, but you have no idea. Those things happen. To get you to, to the point where you're going to be at anyway. So you have to just acknowledge that. Don't be hurt by it. And just move on. It, listen, I, I lost $10,000 in Miami. I was drinking. I didn't sit there and cry about it at all. I was just fucking, it is what it is. You take your losses and you just keep moving. Because there's nothing. You're holding your life back. There's nothing you can do to recoup that money. Or there's nothing you can do to turn back the hands of time. If shit happened, it happened. Just get up and just move to the next thing. You know, the only thing I would have cried about, I thought I lost my damn Super Bowl ring. That's, I would have cried about that one because I couldn't find another Super Bowl ring. But yeah, guys, um, this has been a great answering a few questions. Hopefully, you guys get to know me a little better. And guess what? I'm back to the vlogs tomorrow. You know the feeling. Looking up, it's you know stunning. Looking down, it's seen drip. Neck work for half a million. Niggas mad cause I'm living. On Instagram, trying to kill him. But I'm too busy fucking bad bitches getting M's, nigga. I'm chilling. Twin sides had to sleep on it. New crib, drop three on it. Hit the club and just keep going. See, I'm going stop, but I keep throwing. If she-